Would you believe me if I told you the hardest part of making a voiceover is figuring out how to start it without saying, hey guys, welcome back, because it's honestly true. So I'm just going to skip that and pretend like I already introduced the video and start talking. Today we're going to do an acrylic pour. It's going to be a dirty pour again, but this time we're going to use silicone and a torch as well. If you want to know how the paint is made using Floetrol, I'll link my video where I include that recipe in the cards above so you can watch that first. But I'm just going to go ahead and start adding my paint since it's already pre-made. I'm going to pour it down the side. I just wanted to see if that had a different effect than putting in the center, but it didn't seem to. I'm also going to be dripping silicone. Here it is here. About three to five drops. I'm going to do that twice while adding in my paint. You could do it more times or you can use a different amount of drops but that's going to help create cells in your painting. You can use whatever colors you want for this, but my one piece of advice about the color scheme is that if you're doing like what I'm doing, where it's kind of a monochrome vibe, you want to use one very dark color and one very light color. And I actually really like to add white as well, just so you get that contrast and your picture doesn't end up looking like it's just one color. So now we're adding the white onto the canvas. I made a small mistake last time because I said that it was made the same as the other paint. And it is, but it's mixed to be a bit thinner so that it helps the paint run across the canvas better. I did the regular flip where I just uh, put the canvas on top of the cup and flip it over. You actually don't even have to do it in the center and you can just yank it off. You don't have to do it like this at all. You can do it however you want. I just think the simplest way is to have it all in the center like this. And honestly, those white like veins in the top there are so pretty. I wish I could just leave it sitting like this, but I do want the whole canvas covered, so I am going to be tilting it. Now, in this video, I didn't talk as much about how the paint was made or all that, so I do want to go a little bit more in depth about the tilting and kind of like the techniques of why I'm going back and forth. I'm not just randomly doing it. I really like have a reason every time I change directions. So I'm going to kind of explain that a little bit more. But before I explain anything, let me just tell you something that I did wrong so that you don't pay attention to that. The corner there, you can see I almost covered it and then I pulled it back because I was focused so much on the picture already when really I think it would be best to cover the corners right away because they get harder as you go. That paint thins out and kind of sticks where in the center it's um, more runny. So if you don't do it at the beginning, it's just gonna, when you're tilting toward it again, the center is just gonna run over that anyways. So you're gonna end up losing more instead of less. But once you cover the corners, then you can focus on the overall look of the painting. Like, if you don't want one big area to be just one color, if you have a big chunk of that color, you want to, like, really keep it under control. And in this painting, what that is for me is this big light pink area in the bottom right hand of the screen right now. It's kind of toward the center. I don't want that to run all the way to that corner because then it'll just take up that whole half of the picture. And I also don't want it to run all the way over this dark purple because I really like having that large area of dark purple to kind of break up all the light pink that's going on. So every time that area, like right now, starts to stretch out, I make sure to like pull it back. But you can control everything. You know, the paint is going to run how it runs. Here I'm trying to control it by adding my own paint to the corner. But honestly, being a perfectionist while you're doing this, is not the best but it does kind of help you work on your perfectionism a little bit it would be perfect for art therapy if that's what you wanted to work on was perfectionism that day this would be a great one i won't talk too much about art therapy in this video but i do want to cover that in a future video or later on in my channel because i love that so much it's just a great form of therapy because one you get to create artwork and two it's not just all about like talking about depressing things that happened in your past. It's more about building up characteristics such as working on perfectionism, self-criticism, all those types of things. It's more of like a forward-moving type of 
fun distraction therapy. But anyways, like I said, I'm talk about that in a future video. At this point, I have the whole canvas covered and the balance is about right. I wanted to try and stretch out that dark purple across this edge a little bit to kind of balance out the dark purple on the top, but it was about where I wanted it. So now I'm just gonna try and fix that corner a little bit more. But here, I made a tragic mistake. <laughs> I dripped some white paint right on the center of the painting. I freaked out for about two minutes, but I cut that part out. I just decided I would try and pull it off. This would honestly be a great point to use like a syringe or something. Just kind of suck it up off the painting. But I'm just going to try and like slowly pick it off and then move that purple on top of it. Nikki's adding like a little drop of purple here. And we pretty much camouflaged it back in. I was pretty proud of us for how much we fixed that because I seriously thought for a second that I ruined the whole picture. <laughs> Next, I'm gonna be using the torch. This is the most fun part of the whole process. You can see here, it's gonna add some bubbles and it's also gonna help that silicone create cells in the picture. So I'm just gonna lightly go over the whole entire thing. And it looks kind of weird from this angle, especially with the kitchen lights above. It looks like it's really bumpy and messy, but you'll see once it dries. It dries down pretty flat, and it doesn't have much of a texture once it's done. So there'll be a couple close-ups here in a second where you can really see the bubbles forming. You want to be careful when you do this, though because if you get too close or go over an area too long, you can actually like start to melt the paint and even catch the canvas on fire. It's a little foreshadowing for you. Actually what the torch is doing is like bringing the bubbles out and popping them, not adding them. I kind of misspoke just a second ago, I realized. So here is some really cool bubbles you can see and they just kind of keep getting bigger on their own. I keep calling them bubbles, but I think most people refer to them as cells. It's so satisfying to watch them appear and grow, <laughs> but if you don't want this in your painting, of course you don't have to do this step. I just kind of like the look of a lot going on and it adds like almost a texture to the painting. Now right here, you see all that yellow? That's actually just a reflection of the light above us. There's not actually any yellow in the picture. So here is Nikki telling me to go over this spot. Just kidding, she might have been telling me not to, I don't actually know. But this is a spot that I caught on fire. <laughs> it didn't actually catch on too much fire, but it definitely was smoking and that paint was definitely burnt. Luckily when it dried, it all looked okay. And here it is, completely dry, and you can tell that it's flat once it dries. I just need to add a clear coat to bring back that shine. Now, if you want to try acrylic pouring, there's links in the description for Floetrol and silicone. Comment below if you like how it turned out. Thanks for watching.